All right, this is lesson 4.2. We're going to be looking at something called L'Hopital's Rule. Um, you might be thinking, why are we doing limits again? I know, but it's really an application of derivatives here, too. Um, some limits actually can't be found by using algebraic methods. Now, remember those limits we had before, like this? The limit x approach to 2. You don't need to write this down. Just watch. Remember this one? And then we actually couldn't solve this because you get something like this. You get 0 over 0, and you're like, what's that? And so there was some algebraic means that we did this. Remember this one? We had to factor. Remember that? x plus 2, x minus 2. Oh, we did some algebraic manipulation. And then you solve, right? Yeah, well, um... There's something called L'Hopital's rule that might work too. Um, I'm not going to prove it to you here, but it's usually in the textbooks. So I'm sure you can find that. And of course, if you want to find out in person, then come find me and we'll do it together. But L'Hopital's rule says this, okay? As long as you have a fraction, okay? And if the limit of f of x as x approach to c equals to 0, meaning the numerator, and the limit as x approach to c of g of x equals to 0. That's the denominator. Or both of these limits are either positive or negative infinity. Then we have this. It says the limit as x approach to c of f of x over g of x is equal to the limit as x approach to c of ah, the derivative of the numerator, f prime of x, divided by the derivative of the denominator. Now, don't get this confused. This is not quotient rule, okay? Remember we had a lovely song for quotient rule? This is not quotient rule. But only, this only works, okay? This only works if the original limit gives you some sort of weird expression like this, or infinity over infinity, okay? All right, now really, I don't really like seeing this at all because it's not really mathematically correct. It's like, what is that? What is that? So, uh, let me show you how you should be properly writing this out, especially for those of you writing the AP exam, because they will be looking for proper notation. And the last thing I want to say before doing the examples is, hey, to use this L'Hopital's rule, um, by the way, sometimes we call this LHR, L'Hopital's rule, uh, you need the limit of an expression written in a fraction, okay? If it's not in a fraction, if we don't have f of x in the top and g of x in the bottom, we can't use it, okay? All right, so here we go. First example here. So the key is you want to evaluate the numerator limit and the denominator limit separately first. So if I did this, that's infinity. And if I did the bottom, e to the x, that also equals infinity. Well, that's great, because now, since you have infinity in the numerator, infinity in the bottom, denominator, we can then say, and I'll say by L'Hopital's rule, I'll just say by LHR, now the limit as x approach to infinity of x over e to the x, that's just the original question, is now equal to the limit as x approach to infinity of uh -huh, the derivative of the numerator. So that would be one, the derivative of the denominator, which is still e to the x. And then now I can plug in infinity, I get what, one over e to the infinity, that's infinity, one divided by infinity, that just equals to zero. So there you go. This expression, or this limit, equals to zero. Okay? So you try number two, please. Same idea. Okay, go ahead, you do it, I'll write it. <laughs> like that music? Uh, infinity over infinity again. So I'll say by L'Hopital's rule, LHR. What do we know about the original limit? You guessed it. I can take the derivative of the numerator, which is just e to the x, the derivative of the denominator, which is 1, and then evaluate this limit. This, of course, equals to infinity. Ah, good, 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 good. Okay, how about the next one then? Number three. Uh, the limit in the numerator? Sure. That's zero. Limit in the denominator? Sure. That is 
one. Oh, 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 oh. Don't confuse this with zero over zero, remember? So um, this is just equal to zero over one, which is just zero, okay? Note, this is not an indeterminate form. Okay. An indeterminate form meaning one of these. Okay, so we don't use L'Hopital's rule. Okay, don't get confused. Think, oh, every question in this section is L'Hopital's rule. Okay, number four now. Okay. So once again, if you want to go ahead and find the limit as x approaches zero of the numerator, I get three minus three times one, which is just zero. And the limit as x approaches to zero of the denominator also is equal to zero. Good. So by L'Hopital's rule, I now have the limit as x approaches to zero of three minus three e to the three x over x being equal to the limit as x approaches to zero of hmm, the derivative of the numerator. So the derivative of three is zero. Negative 3 is a constant, e to the 3x is just e to the 3x with an extra factor of 3. Chain rule, remember? Chain rule. And the derivative of the denominator is 1. Well then, I can quickly simplify. Negative 9 e to the 3x, I plug in 0, and I'll get negative 9. All right, um, number five. You notice the number five and number six are actually the same question? Uh, w slash O, that means without. So I want you to try this one without L'Hopital's rule, meaning use algebra. And then for number six, guess what? With L'Hopital's rule. Okay? So if this was one that we did early on in our studies of calculus, this is what unit one, we would have done something like this. Hey, I can factor out a two. Yeah. Hey, I can actually, oh, by the way, I would have checked and I plugged this in, I would have got zero over zero, right? I'm gonna check that first, right, right, right. Then you do all this algebra stuff. Uh, then you would have factored, mm -hmm. I love factoring. Maybe there's a little bit of sarcasm there. And then I love evaluating, no sarcasm there, 2 times negative 1 minus 1, that's just negative 4. Done. Okay? Perfectly fine. But now, remember, because you know L'Hopital's rule, and because you plugged in negative 1 into the numerator and you got 0, and because you plugged in negative 1 into the denominator expression and you got 0, you know by L'Hopital's rule you can, you got it, the original function can be, I know I'm writing fast, but guess what, you can always pause the video, right? <laughs> you have the luxury of pausing, I don't, of taking what, the derivative of the numerator, which becomes 4x, the derivative of the denominator, which becomes 1. And then now you're just plugging in negative 1 into 4x. So what would that be? 4 times negative 1. Look at that! It's the same answer as number 5. Same. So I guess... You don't need algebra anymore. You could now use L'Hopital's rule to solve all those questions we did before in unit one. Okay, now, just a quick note. Don't just use L'Hopital's rule just because a problem looks like a candidate for the rule, okay? Number three, remember number three? Yeah, you think, oh, it's a fraction, right? So I better use L'Hopital's rule. Whoops, I can't even show you number three right now. Where's number three, yeah. You thought fraction, right? Yeah, let's use L'Hopital's rule, uh-uh. 0 over 1 is not a candidate because it's not an indeterminate form, okay? So you have to have something like this or like this before you can use L'Hopital's rule. All right, next page. Well, if using L'Hopital's rule leaves you with the form 0 over 0 or positive, negative, infinity, or infinity, uh, then, I guess what? You can use it again. 
So this is a process that can be repeated as many times as necessary, okay? But just remember to use direct substitution at each step to make sure the rule can be used. And once again, check for the forms of 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So let me show you two examples here, and then we'll be done for today. Or tonight, whenever you're watching me. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Number 7. Uh, I see a fraction. Mm -hmm. I'm going to plug in negative infinity to the numerator. That's infinity. I'm going to plug in negative infinity to the denominator. That's infinity. Perfect. Infinity over infinity. So, by L'Hopital's rule, I will say that the limit as x approaches to negative infinity of x squared over e to the negative x is now equal to the limit as x approaches to negative infinity of the derivative of x squared is mm -hmm. 2x. The derivative e to the negative x is mm -hmm. e to the negative x. <gasps> oh, thank you. Don't forget that negative 1. Chain rule once again. So the derivative of negative x is negative 1. Good. Now I still have a fraction. So guess what I'll do next? I will now once again evaluate the limit as x approaches to negative infinity of the numerator, which is negative infinity. I will then evaluate the limit as x approach to negative infinity of negative e to the negative x, which is also negative infinity. Uh oh, uh oh, or okay. Because now, by L'Hopital's rule, I know that the limit as x approach to negative infinity of 2x over negative e to the negative x is now equal to the limit as x approach to negative infinity of the derivative of the numerator. And the derivative of the numerator of 2x is just 2. And the derivative of the denominator, e to the negative x, oh, don't forget, times an extra negative 1. So simplifying that, that becomes 2 over positive e to the negative x. And this is helpful now because now when I plug in infinity into the denominator, I get infinity. So now I have 2 divided by infinity. Well, look at that. This is equal to 0. Now notice, I had to do L'Hopital's rule twice, right? This equal to that, and then finally that equals to that, before I can actually go ahead and substitute and solve. Okay? So don't be afraid. Don't free cut if you have to do it twice. Do free cut if you're going to do it six or seven times, because on the AP exam, I don't think they'll <laughs> make you do something like that. On my tests, when I do that, you'll just have to find out. Okay. Uh, number 8 is very similar, so I'm going to ask you to try that on your own. And then when you're done, please come back to the video and double check your answer with mine. Alright? So press pause right now. Go ahead and do it, and then come back and double check. And let's hope you and I have the same answer. Ln of 1 is 0, so 0 minus 1 plus 1, 0. Uh, denominator, well, 1 minus 2 is negative 1 plus 1, 0. Ha ha! So by L'Hopital's rule. Do you remember taking the derivative of a natural log function? I sincerely hope that you do. This course is cumulative. You can't forget stuff from the previous units. 1 over x minus 1. 2x minus 2. Okay, I'm going to leave it like this because uh, evaluating the limits again. I get 0 on the numerator. I also get 0 in the denominator. So beautiful by L'Hopital's rule. Let's do it again. <laughs> the limit as x approaches to 1 of 1 over x minus 1 over 2x minus 2 equals 2. Now, what is the derivative of 1 over x? So 1 over x, once again, is x to the negative 1. 
we'll use power rule, so that's negative 1x to the negative 2, all over 2. And if I want to write that nicer, I guess I can write it as negative 1 over x squared, all over 2. And now if I plug this in, that just gives me negative 1 in the numerator and 2 in the denominator. And there you go. My answer must be negative a half. Is that what you got? Please say yes. Yes. Great. So now you're ready to do more practice. Okay. See you back here for the next lesson. When you're ready.